is Orla. I'm a librarian in Kilmehan Library and today I'm going to read The Dead Zoo and it's written by Peter Donnelly and published by Gill Books. Mr Gray was a serious man. He kept his tie perfectly straight, his moustache perfectly combed and an important bunch of keys on his hip at all times. He owned a very old museum in the middle of a very big city and the people in the city called the museum the Dead Zoo. Hmm, that sounds strange. Inside, Mr Gray kept a collection of stuffed animals. There was an elephant from Africa, a tiger from Bengal, and a great white shark from the Pacific Ocean. There were skeletons too, like a giant Irish elk, and even a dodo from Mauritius. What's your favourite animal there? Every day children came to visit the museum, but Mr Gray had some very strict rules. There was no talking, no laughing, no running about, and definitely no touching the animals. It would be fair to say that Mr Gray didn't like people very much. In fact, he preferred the company of his stuffed animals. Yes, indeed. Mr. Gray was a very serious man. Oh, he looks quite serious, doesn't he? One evening, as Mr. Gray was preparing to lock up his museum, he heard an unusual sound coming from the corner of the hall. Good heavens, he screamed with horror. A mouse! Now, you and I know that a mouse is just a teeny, weeny, furry animal that could live happily inside a very old museum. But to Mr Grey, a real live creature didn't belong in the dead zoo. Animals were supposed to be still and quiet. What does the mouse say? Squeak! On hearing Mr Grey's scream, the little mouse darted across the wooden floorboards and through the hallway. Mr Grey set off in pursuit, grabbing the first thing he could find, his large butterfly net. His long legs leapt into action. But the little mouse was much too fast for him. She sped towards the African elephant, running up its long trunk, across its enormous back and down its short tail before landing safely on the head of a stuffed duck. Look at that. Mr Grey looks very angry. Next, Mr Grey almost caught the little mouse as she skipped across the giant walrus. But once again, she escaped just in time. Aha, thought Mr. Gray, as he noticed her scurrying towards a cabinet of tiny mammals. He would surely catch her this time, but he just could not spot her. I could have sworn that pesky mouse was hiding here somewhere. Can you see her? Can you find her there on the shelf? Mr. Gray just had a moment to catch his breath when he heard the rattle of tiny feet above him. There was the little mouse, standing proudly on top of an Irish great elk. Mr. Gray swung his net, but alas, it got tangled on the giant antlers. This mouse was becoming a real nuisance. Once again, Mr. Gray found himself chasing the mouse across the museum floor. This time she weaved beneath the belly of a large rhinoceros, then turned sharply around a family of squirrel monkeys until she skidded towards the back of the room, trapped. Finally, Mr Grey had his big chance, but as he raised his net and prepared to bounce, his keys fell from his hip and bounced between a crack in the floorboards. Now that his keys were lost, how would he ever lock up the museum? Oh no! Mr. Gray looked at the mouse and the mouse looked back at Mr. Gray. There was a moment of silence. Then, quick as a flash, the little mouse jumped into the crack and disappeared from sight. Mr. Gray waited anxiously as the minutes passed. Suddenly, the little mouse popped her head up through the crack in the floorboards and she was holding Mr. Gray's keys. He slowly reached down and took them from her tiny hands. Mmm, thank you, he mumbled. You know what? Maybe having a little friend like a mouse wouldn't be a bad idea after all. She could help Mr Grey keep his museum nice and clean, 
reaching all the places he couldn't. She could dust the tall antlers, shine the small cabinets, and even help him find his keys if he ever lost them again. And in return, Mr Gray's new friend could live in the museum for as long as she wanted. This made the little owl smile, and made Mr Gray smile too. And it felt good to smile and have a friend. Look, he's got a bit of red in his cheeks. He seems happier. Oh, look at Mr Gray now. He's got a lovely purple suit on him. From that day on, every time the children came to visit the museum, Mr Gray and the mouse would welcome them with open arms. The dead zoo became a wonderful place full of fun and games. Mr Gray was now happy to let the children enjoy his museum and talk, laugh, run about and... No, no, no. There was no touching the animals. He was still serious about that rule. And there's the mouse, the mouse laughing away. That was a lovely story. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.